But actually, if you remember, there are only two exams we make every kid do. And one of them is English, and the other one is maths. So maths is the only kind of really, really academic subject, a subject you don't meet in everyday life, that you are made to do until you're 16. And so that creates this fetish, and there's no other word for it about maths GCSE. And so if you ask me, what is the point of maths GCSE, and I, I've often, over 27 years, this is my last year, um, I thought, why am I doing this? Do you mind moving, moving, so sit, but just move a little bit on, no, a little bit further, I'll just sorry that you're totally on, on, on green. You want a green screen, mate? Yeah, I want the green screen, I'm going to um, move you all over. So yeah. what is the point of this? And in the end, why we teach the way we do is because we don't have any other initiation. If you think about, I started off as an anthropologist very many years ago. So in anthropology, there was a standard set of moves that was an initiation right. So you had a, t a period of study, of isolation, a very dangerous experience that somehow gave you your badge in the tribe. Well, that's Master GCSE, isn't it? And once you actually understand that, you kind of understand what is the point of Maths GCSE. What's the point of a 16-year-old inclusive exam that every government changes to represent their version of the tribe? So a little bit of history. Again, there's no particular reason, unless you've been teaching maths GCSE, you would know this. But the last Labour government created one of the great GCSE maths of all time, because it answered that very, very deep question that must lie at the heart of any education, which is who are we educating you for? Are we educating you to give you useful skills to last a life? Or are we just doing what actually Mass Jesus he appears to be, which is an initiation rite? I mean, tribes I used to study, their initiation rite was breaking your arm, or locking you in a box for a year, that's another famous one. Um, and what Labour government said was, actually, no, that's not right. What actually education should be is educating you for a life. Ironically, that came in in 2012. And so you had this period from 2012 to 2016 where people were being educated how to use the internet, how to use maths to critique governments, understand statistics, actually understand the world. But you might have guessed how the story ends. Every government is allowed to change GCSE maths. They're changing the tribes. And so they hated it. And so of course you got rid of it. So last year it was replaced by an exam that, to be honest with you, it would be kinder to lock the kids in a box for a year because it is exactly the same. And the reason why, it could say why did this happen, well it happened for two reasons. It happened because what's happened is the entire system has been reset to the system that Michael Gove used to dream of when he was a, he got a scholarship for private school. And so he was a poor kid in a private school kid who used to read an inspector Peter Britannica. Not that I'm obsessed or anything. But, and it's that kind of exam, so it's an algebra effect, so there's no use. It's the kind of maths that when a kid says, what? this in the whole course of my life, the answer is you're never going to have to do this in the whole course of your life, ever. And the other people who changed it are the universities. Because of course in this system, one of the things that New Labour did, by trying to persuade everybody to go to university, they are actually changing the initiation rights of the tribe. And that's actually a very important thing to understand. That education has this role. We tend to think of it as in terms of the New Labour exam. Everybody is learning to understand their world, but actually that's not its purpose. That's not the purpose of universities. The purpose of Will's story, why universities everybody likes them to critique, what they really mean is everybody likes them to have the society looking at the way people are learning and valuing it and judging it. Because they stand kind of as part of that initiation line, part of that sorting process by which a group of people are trying to label every one of them as this or that, in terms of this or that scars. So they're part of this universal circumcision, that which is really where you have to place the way institutionalised education gets understood. And that's why things like the internet are so difficult for our universities. It's not impossible, and I'm being very bitter here, and I have all kinds of very bloody histories with universities, you do need to know that. Um, but um, one of the things that, um, that what they did was they 
Uh, when the ghosts came to the universities and said, what do you, exam do you want? They and he rather agreed. They wanted an initiation right. They wanted a nice selective exam where only about 5% of the people could actually do it all well. Um, which is remarkable. And then sets up an exam that's actually at odds with the, the old exam, but also at odds with what you need an education system for, and actually what the internet exists for. And one of the curious things that's happening in maths at the moment is you have this terribly selective um, exam, but its effect has been rather different because we make everybody do it um, than I think it was intended. So what the universities had wanted was a nice selective exam to make Exeter University special and to make Oxbridge special and to make the Russian University, University special. What you've actually got is an terrible growth industry of the internet aren't, um, being able to answer this maths GCSE. So there's never been a maths GCSE I've ever taught that you could look up so easily on the internet. That's not designed, that's just because the internet has changed to cope with this initiation, right? And so we're in this very strange situation where you've got universities and a government who are wanting to impose the initiation right version of education. And yet you've got an entire chaotic system that's capable of totally subverting it. And the mass, tutor, mass tutoring um, has never been so busy. Um, I would say this is my last year. It's my last year in case you wondered, but the epilepsy means I can't count anymore. And if you can't count, you do have to give up mass tuition. But I have never been so busy. Um, because I'm part of that kind of bubble where the internet tuition kind of finding out through indirect sources how to learn this very boring, very formulaic exam. Um, and that isn't getting any better. So this very, uh, the new GCSE also allows you to use any calculator. Well, there happens to be on the market a calculator that can solve the world of maths GCSE if you're told about it. And so you have this very, very strange situation. And oh, by the way, in case you wondered, the people who know about the calculator that can solve maths GCSE, I've never known a non-private school te uh, teacher know about it. I've never known a private school teacher not know about it. Um, and, but one of the things the internet is changing is that system. So go impose this system that was acting very, if you want my honest opinion, I think he was wanting to go for a class system. And I was thinking he was wanting to have a system that was really imposing a very hierarchical version by which he understood a version that selected those group of people he wanted to do education. But what technology is doing is subverting it. Even on the level of the technology, even on the level of my ACE calculator, it's called a class quiz if you want to recognise it. 991ES, if you want to pass your GCSE. I mean, it will do it. Um, uh, but that, the knowledge of that is that, and the kind of the bubble up of the tuition to the tutors will also know about it because it's our job. And the internet will all know about it because it's its job. It's subverting any education system. And so this exam, this attempt by the universities and by Gove to have this very, very pointless exam that is just the equivalent of breaking kids' arms is, being, is the last gasp of a certain sort of power system that says we're in charge of education, education is initiation, we're sorting the tribe. And it's actually undermining itself because the people, are, because it's creating this terrible drive within the internet, within the fringes to work out ways to teach this, to make it relevant, but also just to simply subvert it because it ends up being formulaic. And that actually makes it all quite interesting because the role of higher education in that system, they're likely, they're, they're going to be divided. So that you're going to get half of them. And I know lots of wonderful uh, higher university teachers from my old university teaching days. And I'm really not knocking all of them. But, there, but I also know an awful lot of salts who would really rather like to control the internet. Um, and uh, one of the things you've got in the current system, being really, really spearheaded by Maths GCSE, is a system that is the power, the last gasp of the old system, really trying to force itself and just, um, on the system of education that was based around people actually learning for all their lives. And I think it's going to crumble. You know, my opinion. It's one of those things you don't know at the moment. It could still win. It's like, oh, well, I'm not trying to say. It could still happen. But it doesn't, it's been increasingly unlikely. Um, so it's very interesting. Um, it's very interesting to be at this point in education and that kind of conflict 
between education initiation right and education actually for people. And if it's for people, it doesn't have to get done in classrooms. And the minute that doesn't have to get done in classrooms, that changes its entire nature. And it becomes very uncontrollable. Which universities are worried about. As I said, some of them aren't, some of the clever ones. And the clever academies are expanding to actually cope with that. But big universities might not have very many places to go on that. So I think I'll probably just stop there on that thought, if you will. Okay. Thank you.